I who ever came on. <laughs> what do you think, Katie? You're good. You ready to go? Yep. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, <laughs> once again, uh, things have changed, and I'm sure you all know that. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I'd just like to welcome you by whatever means you are here with us today. Uh, I don't have very many announcements because, uh, as, as most of you, I'm sure, know that we have different, uh, the governor has put down different sets of uh, rules and regulations. And uh, even though supposedly we're not uh, bound to those rules and regulations, uh, we're just trying to be as safe as what we can. We've got a lot going on today, uh, especially in the prayer department. And so I just ask you to uh, um, open up your hearts this morning. So uh, just a few announcements that I do have. Bible study this week will be on the conference call and that will be at 6 o'clock this Wednesday. Um, and if you need that, uh, that number or whatever, uh, you can either go to the website, it's on there, or you can call me at home, and uh, I'd be glad to give it to you. Our major, our prayer major, uh, you know, I know we're not in person, and that presents issues, but a couple of options. Out in the bird box out there, um, there is an envelope, and you can put your prayer requests in there if you'd like to stop. If you can't do that, please feel free to mail them to my home address, um, and I will make sure that they get in that manger. And uh, we are collecting food for the uh, Helping Hands Ministry, and I know that's difficult too, uh, but perhaps if you could either, if you have a key to the church, if you're going to drop something off, drop it in the back of the church, or if you would... Uh, like to, um, I'm sure you could either drop it at Marlon Reeves or uh, to the uh, um, Mark and Nancy's. So, I believe that's all the, uh, the announcements that I have. Um, so, uh, Jamie, could you hit that number one over there? Well, good morning, everybody. God is good. All the time. God is good. So, uh, I chose today for our call to worship uh, a section of the 96th Psalm. I think it speaks to where we're at today. Uh, what we need. I, I know these are very difficult times for everybody. Um, I'll speak to that during the sermon this morning. But listen to these words of encouragement from the psalmist. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. 
Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. The word of God for the people of God. If you guys would like to come and light our Advent candles this morning. Chapter 9, verse 6 through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. We relight the candle of hope and expectation, recalling God's promise to send a Savior. As we relight the candle of preparation and peace, remember the voice crying out in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Now, your head in prayer. Father, we are filled with joy because we have hope and peace that you have sent your Son for all who believe. Help us to be the voices that proclaim grace and truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for your willingness to, in, in very strange circumstances, uh, to be a part of God's kingdom, to do God's work. You don't know how much I appreciate what you do. Uh, we certainly need a time of prayer this morning. Um, there are joys that we need to share. Um, we've been praying for Jim Doik out his back surgery. Uh, girls, as far as I know, he's doing pretty good. Doing great. Doing great. Well, that is a praise. That is a praise. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, we just thank the Lord for that. Um, you know, and I'm just thankful for little things. Little things have meant a whole lot more to me lately than anything else. And I, I just thank the Lord for the, the, just, he's good. Even when times aren't good. And uh, we really do need we do need to praise God for the good things in our lives. Uh, I have some prayer requests today, though, too, that we need to. I want you to just keep on praying for the Sloan family. Uh, they're going through a very difficult time, and I just ask your prayers uh, for this. I'm going to get emotional here in a second, so I, you, you guys forgive me. Um, I want prayers for the Divine family. Uh, my friend Mike passed away this morning. Um, you know, Mike, Mike had MS, and um, he contracted the virus, and uh, he passed this morning. And so, uh, you know, he's kind of my extended family, and just saying, please keep the divine family in your prayers, and I have so many memories. It seems such a shame that a young man passed 
Uh, I would also ask if you would remember my daughter Alexis. Uh, she was tested positive a week ago for the COVID virus. Uh, she is still symptomatic. Uh, she has everything that goes along with the virus. She's trying to quarantine in her own bedroom. Uh, but uh, I would really ask for prayers for Lexi, uh, for herself, and for her mental uh, well-being. Uh, most of you know that she works at Arbutus Manor. Uh, four of her patients passed away this week, and especially close. Um, there was a couple uh, named Ray and Nancy. They passed within a couple days of each other. They were both husband and wife at the home there. Uh, Ray, Ray called me Pop, Pat. He was always wanting to come down and see the horse and pet the horse and look around the barn. And said he'd even come out to the church and <laughs> clean the pews. You know, of course, I never got to have a chance to be able to go and get him and do those things because of this stupid virus and everything that goes along with that. Uh, but there were there were four just in my daughter's patients among all the others. And so I just ask for prayers for, for everybody. And, and we've been praying for uh, the Plummer family, you know, because uh, April, April works up at Maple Winds and the Grove family. Uh, Shauna's, Shauna Grove's mom is over here at Forest Hills. And for all those workers and all those um, all those residents of all those places. And this is a very diffi diffi difficult time. Uh, Dawn and Cheryl's son, Mark, um, he's facing cancer and he also um, contracted this virus. And uh, it's just, it's, it's a very tough time for them. And I just ask for your prayers for them also. My sister-in-law, Anita Bracken, is back in the hospital, and uh, she too has multiple, multiple uh, health issues, and she also contracted this virus, and she's not doing well to start out with. All of our frontline workers, no matter what they are, our, our first responders, our our people in the hospitals, uh, you know, our prison systems, our schools, all of those folks that have been so effective. We've got to pray for our governor and all the legislators um, as they are making decisions. And we just pray that they would make those decisions in the fear and the admonition of God. I'm going to pray for our country. As our country is going through a time of change also pray for this church once again pews are empty I'll talk about it in my sermon today I personally feel wounded this morning and I'll talk about that today too uh, this is not what I would like to see Christmas look like in this church. And I want you to just pray that God would open up a door somehow uh, Gertie Ross has to go to Pittsburgh this week uh, to be examined on where she and how she will be treated with the radiation I want you to continue to uh, pray for her for all of our, our folks that are homebound, just, just continue to be with them. And I'm sure that uh, you have your own personal prayer requests this morning, things that you know in your heart. And so today, as we gather by whatever means this morning, uh, Father, I just ask 
that we would bow our head in prayer this morning as your church, not divided, but your church in unity. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come together. You know, and you've been working throughout this whole thing. We have found favor where we haven't deserved to have favor. We have had experiences in our lives that we'd rather not have. But Father, you've been good through all of it. And so today, Lord, I just ask that your grace would just wave over these airways this morning. I'm asking for a supernatural miracle to happen inside the body of Christ. And so we pray today. We pray for all these, these folks that, that desperately need prayer. We pray for uh, the continuing recovery of Jim and all others that are recovering from anything. Pray for the Sloan family this morning, the Divine family, for my daughter Alexis and all the folks that are frontline workers and all the folks that are in those facilities. Pray for my sister-in-law, Anita. Pray for our leaders in our country. And we pray for our church this day. Pray that we were able to make wise decisions. But more than anything else, that we would not weary of well-doing. And on this third Sunday of Advent, this, this Christmas season, as we, we're close now to Christmas Day itself, Father, we just ask that we would remember what Christmas is all about. And it's all about Jesus. We pray for the word today, Father. It's kind of a different word. I mean, it's the Christmas story, but it's a little bit of a different word. And so as we prepare our hearts for worship this morning, let it be with the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, since we're in an empty church this morning, and I'm far enough away from everybody, uh, Perhaps this will be a little bit clearer if I take my mask off, and uh, so I, I, I want to make clear for anybody that's watching over the airways today, uh, we're not in person this morning, and you know I'm not being a rebel or anything like that. But uh, uh, we're we're totally fine without the mask this morning, and it might be a little bit clearer. I've chose today, of course. Uh, <laughs> As I've done for the last three Sundays, I titled the sermon the same thing. I titled this sermon, We Need a Little Christmas, uh, Part 4. Uh, it comes from the first uh, chapter of the book of Luke, and we're going to read from 39 to 45. So I, I'd ask you if you could, if you have your Bibles handy there, and uh, you could turn to that chapter with me, Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 39 through 45. And don't forget who we are this morning. And uh, if you would stand with me, if you were able to, as we give reverence for the word this morning. Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 39 through 45. And Mary arose in those days and went unto the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped inside of her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. 
And she spake out loud with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of the things which were told from her for the Lord. Let's pray this morning. Father, this morning we just ask that you would just take and rightly divide your word with us today. I'm praying for those today that long to be in your church, to be a part of worship. But Father, with that longing, I also thank you that there is the technology that we're able to be the church outside the church. And so as I'm praying for those folks this morning and as perhaps they would be so kind as to pray for me this day, that there would be a revelation of God in our lives and our hearts today. Take from me that that spirit of arrogance and fill me with your grace so that nothing would be said here today that would be contrary to the word of God, that the devil would have no place in any of our lives, our homes, our places of business. And Father, we just ask today that no one would be hurt by, by the word being not what the word is supposed to be. And Father, perhaps a PS onto our prayer list today for all those businesses that's going to be affected and the people that uh, are, are facing Christmas without money, without food, with all the necessities that we just take together. We pray this word would be a place of encouragement in their lives. And so we thank you not for just a baby in the manger this morning, Father, but for a Savior that went to the cross so we could live. And we'll give you the praise for it's in Christ's name. Thank you, maybe see. You know, I have from time to time been asked by people, why am I doing this? Why, why, why did I decide um, to go into ministry? Why am I keeping doing it? Uh, you guys know I'm at the point of age. I wouldn't have to. You know, and as I think of my friend uh, Michael this morning, and uh, the passing of Michael, you know, it just, it goes in my heart again that if there is no, if there is no Jesus, what hope do we really have? And there's nothing like someone encouraging you in a time where nothing in your life seems right. There's nothing that can compare to that encouragement that you receive from someone. Just everything is terrible. In today's text, God uses an older, more experienced woman who is in her own time experiencing God in a way that she never expected nor never did before to speak blessings upon Mary and how that testimony of that blessing traveled around and came back to her. God oftentimes places us in situations where we need to be in order to minister to someone. And I shared in the Bible study 
Wednesday how um, you know I, I had to go to our local um, Giant Eagle to pick up uh, some essential stuff and uh, I encountered a young lady who needed encouragement. And as I was able to pray with that young lady and tell her I would pray for her and just encourage her, I left that store thinking how amazing God is to put us in places where only he could do that. Much like Elizabeth, we may be going through things in our own, our own lives and our own times. But if in those circumstances you are obedient to the Holy Spirit, you'll find that that blessing that you give to somebody else comes right back to you multiplied time and time again. And here we are in a place where none of us want to be. Feeling like John, like Jesus said in John 10.10 10, that the thief has once again stolen something from us. I gotta tell you folks, Christmas was meant to be a blessing. And no matter how you feel right now, someone needs to know what a blessing Christmas really is. And just as Elizabeth wants to marry, maybe you are God-ordained to be that blessing to somebody else. But I will tell you, you better have a little Christmas in your heart so that you can be that blessing that someone else really needs this day. Let's talk about this scripture just a little bit. Our first character in here is Elizabeth. This is a, a woman who never thought that she would ever have a child, was beyond the age of, probably beyond the age of childbirth, and here she is six months pregnant. Now we're not given all the uh, details of why Mary went to Elizabeth, but we can be sure about this. There was a purpose in it, and God was in it. What do we know happened there is incredible. It was one of those incredible but God moments when those two met. We are told by scripture that the baby that was in Elizabeth's womb leaped at that presence. Now, there is a ton of doctrine just in that statement. Doctrine is just teaching what we believe about what the Bible says. And you know, folks, that talks to the sanctity of life. Now listen to me, church, you're either in or you're out. You can't pick and choose what kind of scripture you like and what kind of scripture you don't like. That scripture tells us that life begins inside the womb and God knows about it and life is sacred and you do not have the right to choose and pick what you believe and what you don't believe if you want to call yourself a Christian. And we got to decide, church, are we in or are we out? Now, I personally believe that it wasn't so much the presence of Mary, even though that was very important to this whole story, but the presence that was inside Mary's womb was Jesus Christ the Savior. And I personally believe that that is why the baby inside Elizabeth's womb leaped for joy. At that leaping of that babe inside of her womb, there was this divine moment. And Elizabeth becomes filled with the Holy Ghost. That is a holy moment all in its own. That filling of the Holy Ghost allows Elizabeth to be a holy blessing. And that blessing is exactly what Mary needed in a time where she needed encouragement for the journey that she was going to go on. I would imagine a 
at very times in Mary's life when there was despair, especially at the cross, that she would look back and remember that time of encouragement when someone was a blessing for you. Someone needs you to be that blessing. You may, like me, feel like you don't have much to give, and I don't feel like I have much to give this morning. And maybe, like me, that's why you need a little Christmas in your life, and you need it right this moment. Folks, if we don't get Christmas, if we don't get that, Christmas will come and go, and we'll miss the truth. I have three things that I want to talk to you about today. First is the leap. Second is the filling. And the third is the blessing. The leap, the filling, the blessing. Start with the leap this morning. Luke tells us, when Elizabeth was greeted by Mary, the baby in her womb leaped for joy. Certainly, the implication there is that Mary was pregnant with Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Lord, the very Son of God. That baby that was in Elizabeth's womb would grow to be John the Baptist. And I believe even in that womb, John had a sense that he knew what his destiny was. He was supposed to be the forerunner of the Christ. That presence of Jesus Christ brought joy even when he was in the womb. Now, I must confess that far too many times in my life, I've come into Jesus' presence with more burdens than I have joys. And I'd imagine some of you have the same thing. And oftentimes for me, Christmas has been a time of stress. There's always been too much to do. Not enough time to do it. Not enough money. You, you know the routine there. And all of those things seem to cut into what is supposed to be a season of comfort and joy. This year, right today, this Sunday morning, I feel robbed. Since... I've come to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior 40 years now. Since that time, church has not been a luxury for me. It isn't a time where I can say, well, I can go do something else or I can go to church today or anything like that. No, it wasn't a luxury for me because I longed to be in the presence of God in worship with believers. It wasn't a luxury for me. It is a necessity. And here we are. Easter didn't seem like Easter to me. Could celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ like what we normally do in the church and I felt wrong. And I thought for sure by now everything would be okay, but it's not. And now it's Christmas. This past year has been hard on everybody, and I know that. But we cannot, as believers in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ allows the thief who Jesus calls the devil to steal our joy. You cannot help feel joy in the presence of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to make one thing really, really clear, because here's what the church gets mixed up on. Don't you get mixed up the difference between joy and happiness. Joy is not happiness. Joy is so much more than happiness. Joy is a place that can't be explained even in the most trying of times. Joy is the assurance that Jesus is in control when things seem out of control. Joy is knowing even though this life will surely pass, eternity will start in the presence of Jesus Christ and that's a reality. Happiness is good. And I long for it to be happy, but I'm going to tell you what, happiness passes. You could be happy one day and not happy the next day. It's not joy. 
But joy is what I really need in my life. Christmas is Jesus. Jesus' presence is a leap of joy. And that's why we should say we need a little Christmas in our life. And we need it this very moment. Secondly is the feeling. Scripture tells us once again that while Elizabeth was greeted by Mary and when they came into that presence of Jesus Christ, she became filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I want you to make no mistake here that this is evidence of the divinity of Jesus Christ. As believers in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But it's one God acting in three different parts, but always in unity. Outside of the presence of Jesus Christ, there cannot be no feeling of the Holy Ghost. And I know this gets a little bit deep. But Jesus tells us over and over again that they are one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The church, to be in the church, we must act in the power of the Holy Ghost so that we can be filled with his presence. Christmas has nothing to do with our own arrogance. Christmas is God coming to man. Emmanuel. God with us. Christmas is Jesus. If we truly want to be Christian, and the definition of Christian, what it means is little Christ being Jesus in a little way to the world. We must stop operating in our own power and we have to begin operating in the power of God and be filled with that, that Holy Ghost power. You can't have that power without Jesus. You can't have Christmas in its purity without being in about Jesus. And folks, that's why we need a little Christmas and we need it right this very moment. Thirdly, this morning is the blessing. I've read this story <laughs> how many times. I really don't. And up until I was writing this sermon this, this week, I never really looked at the order of it. We know that God is a God of order. We know that. And in his gospel, Luke lays out an order of blessing. First, Elizabeth is blessed by Mary coming and seeing her. I know these are difficult times. And I know that we can't visit like we normally do. I, I, I understand that. You can pick up a phone. You can mail a card. You can do something. And Elizabeth is blessed by Mary's greeting. Elizabeth's baby leaps and is blessed by the presence of Jesus Christ. Elizabeth then is divinely blessed by the filling of the Holy Ghost. And Mary is blessed by all that has happened. Sue Bordas sent me a picture on my phone, and I'm sure some of you have seen uh, that little placard that says, blessed to be a blessing. If you're blessed, there is a purpose for that blessing. Now, I'm speaking to the church now. I'm speaking to believers. Blessings travel in circles. You're blessed, and you pass on that blessing. That blessing gets passed on to someone else. And since that blessing travels in a circle, that blessing eventually comes back to you and you end up being greater blessed than the one that you blessed. Did you get that? 
You have to bless first, and then that, that blessing multiplies, and, and then that blessing goes on to somebody else, and, and that blessing continues to travel, and by the time it gets back to you, you are more blessed than what you thought you were going to give the blessing to somebody else because that blessing ended up coming back to you, and you were blessed for being a blessing. Woven into Luke's account is this truth with a capital T. True blessings have their origin in God. Where we run into trouble is where we think it comes from us. The blessing of Christmas came from God. For unto us a child is born. A Savior, which is called Christ the Lord. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son so that you would not perish. So you would have eternal life. If you accept that blessing, that blessing will travel in circles. And you will be blessed in more ways than you can even imagine. You pass that blessing on to others, and they in turn do the same, and it travels, and it comes back around, and then one sweet day, one sweet day that blessing comes home. And you might be closing your eyes to this world, but you're going to open them up to Jesus Christ. And you get to be with the one who gave you that blessing in the first place, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So in conclusion this morning, I just have a couple of questions for us to ponder in our minds this morning. Will you leap for joy for the true meaning of Christmas this year? and not be caught up on all this nonsense that's going on. But will you leap for joy for the true meaning of Christmas this year? Will you empty yourself out and allow God to fill you with his presence, the Holy Ghost? And will you pass that blessing on and not keep it yourself? I believe now more than ever, we all need a little Christmas, and we need it right this very moment. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you this day for the opportunity once again to tell the story of Jesus Christ and to offer encouragement this morning to someone who needs that encouragement. And I realize this is not normal times. And I know that, like me, many of us feel wounded today because we can't celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ the way that we have in the past. Christmas is not about us. It's about Jesus. And I pray that each and every one of us who is listening to my voice knows the blessing of Christmas. And that means that you have Jesus Christ in your heart and you have committed him to be your Lord and your Savior. And if you haven't, there is not a better Christmas gift than knowing who Jesus really is and asking him into your heart. And I'm just going to pray real simple. If you have never done that in your life, or if you have done that, you need to redo it again because I do it all the time. I have to redo that to my commitment to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you would just bow with me in a spirit of humbleness and shame for our sins. And just ask Jesus to clean us up. Come into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. The scriptures tells us 
that if we call out to the Lord with a humble heart, he will come in and be our Savior. But then you're going to have to ask him to be your Lord too because I'll tell you what, this is an easy road we're traveling. And without him guiding us as our Lord, we're going to get lost every time. And I pray today, if you've prayed that prayer, that you get back into the word. You get back into the assurance of what Jesus said and the truth of the word. And we'll give you the praise. Go out and be a blessing today. Tell somebody what Jesus Christ has done for you. Allow that blessing to come circle, full circle and back to you. And we'll give you the praise for it's in Christ's name. I apologize for my emotion this morning. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a morning. Uh, but it's been a good day. So go in peace. Go in joy. Go in love. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from the other. May God's blessing surround you each day. As you trust him and walk in his way, may his presence within guard and keep you from the sin. Go in peace, go in joy.